Okay, team, let's look at this one right here. Now, in this assessment, it's sort of a connection. It's a, it's a carryover, pardon me, from that last scenario that we had, right? Where we were looking at that kindergarten, that first grade teacher, and they had done a lesson uh, uh, where they taught a specific uh, rule. I guess they were teaching blends. And after doing uh, um, explicit instruction, they did some guided practice. And then they did this assessment where they had students read some words, um, out of context, uh, read some words that were in isolation. And then we looked at the students decoding or their letter sound correspondence. And in our analysis, we saw that several of the target words, the student had difficulty with consonant blends, right? And so that's where we're picking up here. After having done that analysis, we saw that the student was having difficulty with these blends when it came time to decoding, right? The student is supposed, the word, the, the target word from the text is quilt, and the student says quit. So they, they, they miss the LT. They should have said left, and they said let. They drop, they have difficulty with the FT. The, the word was quest, and they said quet, and, and then that was ST. So they're having difficulty with blends. Can you see that? Okay, so it says here, given the student's performance on the assessment, which of the following actions? Again, actions. Hmm. It's not my first word choice. Maybe instructional strategy, intervention, support, mini lesson. Action just feels a little awkward. But which of the following actions would be most appropriate for the teacher to uh, take next? Let's see here. Which would be the most appropriate for them to take next? Uh, is it uh, is it uh, A, implement reinforcement activities with a student focused on common consonant diagraphs? Is that, well, first I'm gonna read that again. Implementing reinforcement activities. <laughs> Isn't that a very wordy phrase? Look at all the syllables that are there. Implementing reinforcement activities. Imagine someone did that to you in school, we've got to implement reinforcement activities. I don't. It sounds like you're, you're you're calling up the army or something, right? That's very that's very serious talking. Implementing reinforcement activities. Okay, implementing reinforcement activities with the student. I, what I'm I'm not making fun of the army. I'm saying that it's a very formal and wordy way of saying something. Basically, they could have just said do some activities to help the student, right? Doesn't have to be so formal. Yes? Okay, implementing reinforcement activities with the student focused on common consonant diagraphs. And it's it's not an issue on consonant diagraphs. Consonant diagraphs, remember, are CH, SH, PH, uh, TH, W, right? So in that case, it's out. Do you hear me? Because we know what a constant diagraph is, all right? How about this one right here, uh, C. Uh, sending home the words the student missed to practice for reading homework. Mm, I don't know. How, 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 how often does that work these days? I'm a parent. As a parent, I can tell you a lot of things are missed. I'm, I'm sad to say, uh, I, I'm not in your classroom and I have no idea what you're doing half the time. It's the truth. It's very hard. And so little things like this could easily go over the parent's head, right? Because the child comes, right? You get the idea. So that might not be the best practice. If you're, if you're anticipating, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, in need of a specific result, sending something home like this and asking the parent to pick it, pick up the slack, you know, it might be dropped. Okay. It could easily be miscommunicated. So that's probably out too. How about this one? D, transitioning the student to reading long vowel patterns. Long vowel patterns, I'll give an example. Like vowel consonant uh, E, silent E, like the words move, the, the word dive, right? The word um, uh, cake. These all have that vowel consonant magic E, vowel consonant magic E, vowel consonant magic E, and, and that creates a long vowel. So that would be a long vowel, a long vowel word pattern. So again, it's not the issue here. The answer is A, engage the student in phonemic awareness activities focused on final consonant blends. I, I wouldn't have said that. This is really interesting. 
I, by the way, I love this question. Now that I'm reading it, I love it because uh, for so many different reasons, but the, but let's talk about why it's so cool. Uh, you're getting to see a question, right? Where they build in language that is designed to be wordy. Yes. And clunky. And, and, and the thing that I said about the military, I just was thinking about something more formal, not to offend anyone, but, but that formality that sort of hits you and you're so focused on the formality, implementing reinforcement activities that you kind of miss because look how it's structured. Implementing reinforcement activities for students focus on common consonants. Oh, it's got to be this one because I don't have time because I'm rushing on the day of the test and, I, and I'm not going to go and see diagraphs. Do you see that? They overwhelm your brain in the beginning of the sentence. Everything looks good up to common consonants. And then your brain, because you're rushing, says common consonant blends and you miss diagraphs, right? Or this one right here, um, um, transitioning students to reading, uh, transitioning the student to read long vowel word patterns. You get exposure to that. Awesome. Awesome vocab. I love it so much. It's not the right answer, but I love using That would be great if you saw a student with, having difficulty with words like this, right? You could, you could say the student is having difficulty reading long vowel word pattern words. I love that. Long vowel pattern words. And you'd want to include that those hyphens there, right? Long vowel pattern words like these. Awesome. Okay. Again, it's not the right answer, but you're, you're getting it practiced with, you know, a new vocab that you could put in your essays. Or how about this one? Engage the student in phonemic awareness activities like, uh, can you think of any? Phonemic awareness activities. Phonemic awareness activities like say it and move it. That focuses on final consonant blends. So again, I would have been just fine with consonant blends. I love how they put final consonant blends. That's awesome because that's even being more precise. Look at this. They all were final consonant blends. I think on the day of the test, I just would have said constant blends. But this is saying to you, hey, we can even be more detailed. So I'm talking to the teachers that are reading specialists right now, right? This is how you get a four on your essay. Instead of saying the student had difficulty with constant blends, you say the student had difficulty with final constant blends. And now you take these basic words like left and quest and quilt. And you blow them away because you were able to be very precise and exact with your language. Final consonant blends. Team, do not um, underestimate how uh, profound basic concepts are. If you point out some of the most basic things, they're going to love that. Okay, so this is great. If you notice a student has difficulty with uh, consonant blends, figure out, is it the beginning consonant blend? Is it a, uh, a final consonant blend? and find a way to fit that vocab into your essays. Team, it's a great problem. I know I took a little longer on this, but I love it. The answer is B. And again, again, another solid question from the reading uh, the Science of Teaching Reading Exam. The answer is B. It's a great one. It's got a nice write-up if you want to take a look at a good question, okay?